Good morning. My name is Michael Monroe, and today we're going to continue our study in Titus. As we have just read yesterday in chapters 1, verses 1 through 9, we see that Paul is writing to Titus to stay in Crete and raise up true leaders of the faith. He's instructed to find elders and teach them how they should live their lives as a true follower of Jesus. After establishing the criteria for leaders within the church, Paul then warns Titus of the dangers that necessitate high quality leadership. Let's three, read through the next portion of scripture together. This is Titus 1, 10 through 16. And I'm reading out of the NLT. For there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others. This is especially true of those who insist on circumcision for salvation. They must be silenced because they are turning whole families away from the truth by their false teaching. And they do it only for money. Even one of their own men, a prophet from Crete, has said about them, These people of Crete are all liars, cruel animals, and lazy gluttons. This is true. So reprimand them sternly and make them strong in the faith. And they must stop listening to Jewish myths and the commands of people who have turned away from the truth. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving because their minds and consciousness are corrupted. Such people claim they know God, but they deny him by the way that they live. They are detestable and disobedient and worthless for doing anything good. This scripture reminds me of a church I went to in California. Some of you may know this about me, but in 2007, I moved out to Los Angeles to pursue a career in music and entertainment. After a few months of settling into this new state, a new part of the country, and a completely different culture than Arkansas, I was able to find a local church. Initially, I was thankful for this church, and I seemed to be full, seemed to be full of the Spirit, and I was finally able to start finding some community. And over the course of a few months, or in that first year of living in California, I started to notice some things that just did not sit well with my spirit. One of those things was how important fame and status was to those church leaders. Even famous people would show up to church to almost show the world how good Christian people they are with paparazzi waiting outside. Secondly, the church started to raise money uh, for a TV show to reach more people. It declared that they would put a gold brick in the sanctuary with the names of those who gave over six figures towards their goal of two plus million dollars. As the weeks went by and there were multiple gold bricks now added to the sanctuary, one Sunday morning I saw the head pastor pull up to the parking lot in a brand new Bentley. I was shocked. If our elders and our church leaders are more involved in adjusting to the culture around them than living to the according to the word of God, it can cause confusion and suspicion of authority. I love what Pastor Rick always says, we must have immovable convictions and shocking love. This is pretty much what Paul was saying here in Titus. Verses one through nine describes what an elder of the church should be. A leader of the church should be blameless, faithful to his wife and to his children, not be arrogant or quick-tempered, honest with money, wise, just, and self-disciplined. As we get into verses 10 through 16, Paul mentions those who were insistent on circumcision for salvation. This circumcision group pushed a legalistic agenda, creating extra expectations to make someone more like Christ. There were stipulations that were being added to the gospel, calling people to either do this or do that or don't do this don't do that, rather than having actions as a response to the grace of God. The circumcision group was teaching actions as a means to receive that grace. Ephesians 2, 5 reminds us that it is by grace that we have been saved. Salvation is not something that we can earn with our actions. Paul then goes on to say that these types of church leaders were turning entire families away from the truth, making money a priority, and they must be silenced. I recall that feeling I had at my first church in California. I remember being confused at the purpose of all this money and how a pastor could buy a Bentley with tithe money. And it did turn me away from that church permanently. When we reprimand, rebuke those who are leading people astray, this is only going to strengthen their faith. Paul goes on to say in verse 14, they must stop listening to Jewish myths and commands of people who have turned away from the faith. This reminds me of another scripture that Paul wrote in Colossians 2, verse 8. He says, See to it that no one takes you captive 
through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than Christ. Paul is warning Titus of two types of dangers to the community of Christians. Number one, those that claim that the gospel consists of Jesus plus something more. And number two, those that can claim freedom to do anything they want because Jesus. In the last portion of this scripture, Paul writes, Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving, because their minds and their consciences are corrupted. Such people claim they know God, but they deny him the way they live. They are detestable, disobedient, and worthless for doing anything good. The point is this. Belief and behavior must walk hand in hand. May God bless you. Have a great day.